begin with a word of prayer. Our dearest Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be back. Uh, thank you for taking me on my journey all over the place uh, safely and being back here to worship with this church family. And Lord, I ask that as I give this message that, Lord, that you would speak directly into the minds into the hearts of each and every person here today. Lord, that we would be open and teachable to your words and each person that walks through that door today would leave here changed for your glory. In Jesus' name we ask this and pray. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. God placed on Him the sin of us all. So that He could justify the sins of the whole world. chemistry and if you if you've heard about the show there's a lot of chemistry involved so I thought that was a pretty relevant clip but breaking bad okay breaking bad and you know here we are talking about breaking bad religion bad religion and when I wrap this up today I, I I hope that I hope that each of you can really take away something anything from what I'm going to share with you today and you know my 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 goal my goal today is to not tell you what to do. It's to get you to really think. Get you to really feel. Get you to really experience the things that, that God wants to make real in your life. That's my goal today. There's a lot of talk about religion. And, you know, when I was, uh, when I was on my trip... Uh, there was a lot of talk about religion. I mean, um, the people, the people that I talked to, religion really, it's, it's a complicated topic for them because everyone feels like, oh, it's something that it's not, it's, it might be necessary, but we really don't know, but we don't really care to explore it that much. So we'll just leave it at that, right? And uh, when I started my, my new job, um, one of the one of my coworkers, uh, who's well, my mentor, uh, I was having a conversation with him, and then I learned that he was a Christian, and you know, we got talking about our stories, and then he was telling me, you know, um, a lot of the problem that I see, David, is that it's not that people have a problem with God; it's that people have a problem with religion. And that got me thinking, religion, what, what does that word mean to people, right? And since we're talking about breaking bad, all right, bad religion, okay, I'm going to categorize the two, all right, bad religion. And if all there was was bad religion, okay, let me tell you, I would become an atheist. I would become an atheist in a heartbeat. If there was nothing but bad religion, I would become an atheist. At the center of religion, okay, exists a way for us to come together and connect with God. But I think that, you know, the rub is that sometimes, you know, religion can do a really good job at it, and sometimes it does a really bad job. And when it does a really bad job, okay, that's how we end up with this bad religion. Bad religion makes God out to be like me. All right, think about this. Okay, that's a problem because if you're completely honest with yourself, if I'm completely honest with myself, okay, I realize that I don't always do things for the right motive. I don't. I'm human. I don't always make the right 
or, you know, the good decisions. So having a God that's built more like me is not something that I want to look for. So why are we here? Sometimes, you know, I have to keep, you know, sometimes when I, when I talk to um, some of my friends who are atheists, they have, they, they, they have a preconceived picture of what this whole God thing means. And, you know, someone that I have to, you know, keep doing things for, you know, I have to put my money towards, I have to participate in, you know, some, someone I have to keep coming up with new ways to appease that person, appease that, that, that God, that's something that doesn't work out. That's something that doesn't work out for me, okay? That's not something I'm looking for. And, you know, when I talk to my friends, you know, especially those who, you know, they either went from being an atheist to being, you know, a Christian, or they went from being a Christian to being an atheist, they have things in common. They have things in common no matter which way that you go. And one of those things that stands out the most strongly, okay, is that the picture of God that they get isn't something that they want to have in their life. Okay, just the picture of God that they get is something that they don't want to have in their life. And whether you believe in God or not, okay, you can relate to this. Okay, you can, inter you can relate to, you know, interacting with somebody who's a religious person and, you know, feeling like, oh, you know, they're a lot better or they're way more into this religious -y thing that I could ever be. Right? Now I need, to, I, need, I need to break a wall. I need to break a wall here. Because there's, there's this thought, there's this thought, and I, you know, over the course of the past few months, just in talking to people, I've, I've just heard it over and over again, and so I have to bring it up. But there's this thought that's propagating around that, you know, unless you are a super religious person, okay, you don't have any access to God. Let me, phrase, let me phrase it differently, okay? If you don't do a bunch of these things, if you don't know how to do X, Y, and Z, you're going to burn. And, you know, unfortunately, there's this, there's this picture of fear and of, you know, blind commitment that people just, they don't want to have that. They don't want to have to, they don't want to have to deal with that, Right? Now let me ask you, how many of you want to be in a relationship where all you do is slave away to appease somebody? Let me switch gears for a minute, okay? A religion has to be practical. It has to be practical in order for me to believe in it. I don't know how it is for you, but let me bring you through my thought process, okay? A religion has to be practical in order for me to believe in it, in order for me to get behind it. If somebody is following something, if somebody is following Christ, I want to see that practical application of it. Okay, what, what, what is this going to do for my life? What does it do for their life? Okay, we talk about, you know, patience, and, you know, does, <laughs> does knowing God bring love? Does, uh, do, is it just emotional? Why can't people just do good things and just forget about the bad? Does religion, you know, does it bring too much of that ritualistic stuff, you know, it, it, and just you, you do things just to show somebody or to show or, or, or just to show God that you have it all together? And, you know, whether it's, it, it's God or the people around you, you know, sometimes people just want to impress. So where's the genuine relationship? Where does it come from? And I want to share with you, you know, two stories this evening. You know, about two people that were exposed to some really bad religion. And what's really cool about their stories and what connects them, okay, is that what they did to break that bad religion. And these are awesome stories, and, you know, I hope that you can resonate with them. And as I said before, you know, religion is about us connecting to God. Different avenues and different ways that we connect to God. And so a long time ago, all right, a long time ago when the world first began, all right, God created Adam and Eve, all right, and God had a personal relationship with them. He walked with them. 
He talked with them. It was a one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one face to face relationship. Okay, now you bring sin into the picture. And then it broke that relationship. And so from that point, from that point on, the entire rest of the Bible is God finding all sorts of ways to connect, restore, and show people that they have complete access to Him. He wanted to restore that relationship. Now we talk about, you know, what we talk about is like, one of the things I hear is like, oh, you know, if you're, if you're not a religious person, well, obviously you're, you're going to burn. That's what, that's, what, that's what they say, you know, you're just going to burn. Let me tell you something. So when you have a relationship with God, when you understand what it means to have a relationship with God, you see things in a whole new way, and I'll give you an example. I'll use that example, actually. All right? Somebody telling you, oh, if you're not a religious person, you're going to burn. In Revelation, okay, in the book of Revelation, we're talking about the end, the end times, right? And at this time, you know, it, it, it says that, it says that the wicked will be consumed. The wicked will be consumed by a fire, right? Now, I want you to think about it this way. In Song of Solomon, okay, that's one of the most passionate books of the Bible, okay? It said that fire is like a consuming love. Have you ever been in love before? Have you felt that fire, you know, that you know what it's like to, to know that love, what God's love is like? God is described as being a fire, okay? His city, his city, the heavens are being described as being on fire. The throne is on fire. He wants you to be able to dwell in that fire and not be consumed. Church, okay, if you want to get into the presence of God, if you want to be in heaven, you have to be fireproof. Think about it this way. Think about it differently, all right? It's like uh, if you know the story of Moses, there was a burning bush. <laughs> There is a burning bush, and how does this bush burn and, and not be consumed? It's the righteous people that burn forever. Okay, the wicked aren't fireproof. They burn up. So God wouldn't allow them to be into heaven because heaven would be hell for them. You see how the devil can go and flip it? It's interesting things to think about when you can look at things in a whole new way. In Hebrews 4, 16, it says this. It says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Let us approach God's throne of grace with fear. No. Let us approach it with all the things we've done. No. Let us approach it with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I love this verse. I really do. I really do. Because this verse conveys to me that there is a God that is on a throne, but with confidence I can approach Him. I did something wrong, doesn't matter. I can still approach confidently. I feel some shame. I feel some guilt. It doesn't matter. I can approach confidently. To know that I can approach the most powerful being in the universe without worry of being rejected. That's something to really check out. That's something to really explore. It's like walking and talking with a friend. You know, this image of God is trying to communicate you, uh, is trying to communicate to you, is the image of being able to walk side by side with you, and to talk to you. Okay, every time, you know, we're in the need of mercy, in need of grace, in need of comfort, God will be there. In the times that you're stressed out and you don't know which way to go, those are the times that God is looking to help you. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. So, you know, what do I get 
What do I get from this relationship with God? Unrestricted access to God. We can have unrestricted access to God. And you know, a lot of religion, you know, it will tell you, oh, well, you have to do this. You got to do that. You got to take care of these things before you can get to God. Okay, before God can love you, you have to do this and this and this. What God is saying is, really take this to heart. We can have unrestricted access to God. Unrestricted access to Him. I can go to Him any time of day, any time of night I want. And so I said I was going to tell you about a story. And the first story I'm going to tell you is about a man named Zacchaeus.
and then they get rejected. They're denied access because they have X, Y, and Z. And then they're just like, but I just wanted to listen to them. So Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was a different person. Jesus was a different guy. And so Jesus is coming and the crowds are building and he wants to see him too. And he's thinking, this is my only chance. This is the only chance I'm going to get to see him. And so as the crowds kept coming, he realized that he couldn't even get close. He couldn't even see Jesus. Well, he, he was a really short guy. I mean, he's a really short guy. You know, and the crowd's all getting around him. What, what was he supposed to do? So he ran ahead of the crowd, and he climbed up, uh, and he climbed up a tree, and then he, he waited there so that when Jesus passed, he could see him. And in front of all of the people, in front of all the people who despised him, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down from there. I'm going to your house today. What? You're coming to my house? This absolutely blew his mind. I mean, this is, can you imagine yourself as Zacchaeus? Jesus, are you serious? Nobody likes me. No one even acknowledges me. I heard the stories about how you walk, you walk with people like me, but you really want to walk with me? He wants to walk and talk with me? Religion isn't the problem. It's how it's lived out that makes it good or bad. Jesus was very religious. He was very religious. I mean, it says, you know, uh, as was his custom, he went, he went to an insert place there. Jesus was a religious guy. He wasn't against religion. He was against bad religion. He was against bad religion. As a culture, we have experienced so much bad religion. There are many people like Zacchaeus that are actually trying to understand. They're actually trying to look for the answers. They're actually trying to establish for themselves their own beliefs. And they want to know who this God person is. But they got pushed out. They got cast out and they're not allowed back in. You know, they're doing this in and out dance with, with themselves. And then they're like, you know what? Religion... God, it doesn't matter. Forget it. Forget about it. I don't care. I don't care. And I can imagine that Zacchaeus, you know, as he saw Jesus, he got a picture of what he wanted to be when he was a kid. You know, I look at all the things. I look, I, I look, at, I look at things and, you know, sometimes I'm like, man, why do we have to follow? Why do we have to follow the system if it's broken? You know, I'm, I'm an engineering student. You know, I, I, I solve problems. That's what I'm going to do. I want to do for the rest of my life. Why do you want to keep following a, a system if it's broken? Why do you want to follow the system if it's wrong? Why is it that we have to, why is it that we have churches that are exploiting, that are exploiting the money that's being given to them? That is a broken system. That's bad religion. That is completely wrong. Why do we have people killing people? That's bad religion. That is completely wrong. So Zacchaeus said, you know, he said, fine. I'll seek out my own ambition. But that life-changing moment for him, when he saw Jesus, a man who stood up for what was right and who lived by the principles that he knew to be true, the principles that he believed in and justified his actions and beliefs with power and authority, the things that he did for the right reasons, that was the type of person that Zacchaeus wanted to follow. He didn't want to follow the broken system of hypocrites, where man will let you down. 
God will only lift you up. That experience brought something up in Zacchaeus that changed his heart. That's something that I can get behind. I can get behind Jesus. And so they spent the afternoon together, and then when all was said and done, okay, he said, Jesus, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give away half of my income. And anyone who I cheated, I will repay them four times. When was the last time you had an afternoon with someone and they blew your mind so much that you wanted to go change the entire world? People who inspire, people who care, people who encourage, people who want you to improve, people who want to get you to the next level, those are the types of people I want. People who will love you. People who will love you. Those are the types of people that you want in your life. Where man will let you down, God will only lift you up. God loves you so much that he sent his son here to die. God loves you so much, even in all of your rebellion. Even if you've rejected him over the years, even if you're a Christian, you, you are in church every, every single week, and you're doing all the right things, but you make one mistake, God still loves you. That unbelievable amount of love, that's something you want in your life. That's something to check out. And so he was, you know, Zacchaeus, he was kept from being able to experience God because of bad religion. Because of bad religion. But when he experienced good religion, unrestricted access to God, he met Jesus face to face. Bad religion creates barriers to God. Good religion gives us unrestricted access to open question for you. And you don't have to answer me, but has bad religion gotten in the way of your view of Jesus? I mean, really just take it to heart. Has bad religion gotten in the way of your view of Jesus? Have you not been able to look past some of the things that you've experienced or some of the things that you've seen? Why are they limiting your view? Why are they, what's stopping you from finding out who God really is? My other story is about a man named Saul. And I've talked about Saul before, but I love Saul. Saul is a great example. Okay? And I, and, and I love to use him. Saul was a legalist. Okay? And you know, he grew up in the same system that Zacchaeus grew up in, except Saul, he went the other way, okay? He didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't initially an atheist, he was initially just Christian, okay? He went into ministry. He stayed with the faith. And, you know, when he was five, he started learning scripture, and he got underneath a good, uh, uh, a good, uh, a good mentor who, you know, they, 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 somebody to shape and to mold him into a godly man. And as he grew up, he saw the hypocrisy. He realized that people weren't humble enough to realize that they have weakness. And as leaders, you know, they, they, were, they were ashamed. They were ashamed to share it with people. So instead, you know, they, they, they tried to cover it up by doing more things. And so Saul ended up doing the same thing. And so, you know, later in his life, later in his life, this same Saul becomes Paul, the Apostle Paul, the, probably the most famous apostle the world has ever known. And, you know, he writes later in his life that during that time, during that time, I was just advancing the traditions of my father's. 
I was just doing, I was just doing what we've been doing this whole time. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't taking, I wasn't taking God's words to, God's words to complete truth. I wasn't going deeper. I was just advancing the tradition of my fathers. You know, that sounds, that sounds almost like a great religion, you know. Instead of advancing what God had intended, you advance the tradition set forth by man. This is what bad religion does. It corrupts the perfect system. And so Saul, on his journey, on his journey to go and imprison, and imprison some people, he has a face-to-face -face experience with God. And God, and God says, Saul, I don't want you to spend the rest of your life thinking that you can't come confidently forward. I don't want you to spend the rest of your life thinking that this is the limit of what I want you to do with your life. It, it was the moment that changed his life forever. The moment that he met God face to face. And that is how Saul became Paul. And so the correlation between these stories is that these people saw God face to face. You know, in the beginning, in the beginning, God, he wanted a personal relationship with us. He wants a personal relationship in the middle. And we saw that, okay? We can come confidently before God with everything. And Jesus, he came to this earth. And he lived a personal life. He walked the streets with the people. He met them face to face. And he died and was resurrected so that we could have a face to face encounter with God. And I don't want to convince you that religion is a great thing. That's not the goal tonight. I want you to understand that there is a God that has un restricted access to him. One that is, that has a face-to-face -face interaction. <coughs> That's something that you should check out. You know, what's really cool about this is, uh, in the Bible, we have uh, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, you know, when we watch a movie, we don't like to focus in one spot. You know, if you watch all of Back to the Future, and all you did was focus on the DeLorean, I'd be very disappointed, right? I, I, I wouldn't get to see, I wouldn't get to see all the awesome, the, all the awesome effects, right? But, we, when we watch movies, we don't want to focus in one spot all the time. We want to see all the different angles, right? The Gospels, those four Gospels are wonderful because it's four different camera angles of Jesus. Each and every single person is telling about how they saw the same thing happen. Multiple perspectives. This is how we get to see Jesus face to face. So when we can find out exactly what kind of relationship we can have with God, it's not a big secret. It's not a big secret that, you know, crazy religious people only believe. If you want to know Christ, you can know him. In the beginning of uh, Zacchaeus' story, in Luke chapter 19, you can check it out there. Luke chapter 19 is where you can read Zacchaeus' story. It says that Jesus entered Jericho. Jesus entered Jericho. What would it be like if right now, God entered into your life? What would it be like for you if God came through those doors and looked at you face to face? Have you seen Jesus face to face? You can come confidently to him face to face. This is my take-home question to wrap up. Wrap up for
for tonight. What might your life look like if you had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus? What would your life look like? And if there's something you want to share, if there's something you want to share, there are plenty of people here in this church family that will talk to you. If you don't want to talk face to face, on those prayer cards, right on the back, we take those very seriously. Prayer warriors pray earnestly for them. If you are looking to understand who God really is, you have unrestricted access to Him. The choice is all up to you. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come up here and share this message with your people. Lord, we all struggle with different things, whether it's in the form of emotion, or if it's in the form of, of worry, or Lord, we just don't know which way to go. We don't know if... Knowing you is something worth value in our lives. Lord, I ask at this time that you would reveal yourself to each and every person, person here in a special way. That they might know who you are. Lord, if there are questions that are staying strong in our minds, Lord, I pray that we would pursue them. Lord, we know. We know that all things, all things come through you. And so, Lord, it is my genuine prayer this evening that every person here might be touched by you, that every person here might know who you are and the whole reason why you came and your plan for us in the future. Lord, it is my genuine prayer that each and every one of us can take this to heart and, and really just meditate on this, that we might all know what it is to have a loving relationship with you. In Jesus' name, we ask this and pray.